Hey, internet friends. I'm taking a small break from doing my throwback series because I was just super inspired to do this look, so I had to bring it to you. I am so excited for tonight's tutorial. I really wanted to bring you guys something that had roses in it. I really wanted to show you guys a really cool techniques and how to get those done, and also really something that has high contrast and really was just beautiful to look at, and I'm so proud of how it came out. So if you guys are as excited as I am, then just keep on watching, and I'll show you guys how I did it. It's easier than you think. Ayy. So the first thing I'm going in with is a water-activated paint. This is from Mayron, and it's their Prisma uh, palette. So essentially what it is, it's an ombre palette that contains white, gray, and black. And you're going to need a flat brush. I'm using a synthetic actual paint brush. And all it needs to do is be square and flat, like you see here. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add in some mixing medium, because it's a little bit thicker than water. You can use water if you want, but I wanted super pigment. And you want to just swish the brush in from left to right to get this ombre effect on the brush. And then with that, it's as easy as touching it to your skin, and you're going to want to create a little bit of a tiny N shape, and that's going to give you your first petal. And it is so beautiful. You guys can see how it just glides right on, and it's already shaded. This is called One Stroke. It's a painting technique, and it's very widely used to create flowers and leaves. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to take it again, and we're going to keep looping it around. We're going to do four petals total that's going to go in a full circle. Oops, sorry, my phone. <laughs> Every time. So once you get those first two, you just want to keep on going, and now it's going to get a little bit of a four-leaf clover shape, and then you want to just finish off with that bottom section. I'm dipping the brush in every single time after every petal. That's going to prevent muddying, and you also want to keep your brush very flat and very square. Once that's done, and make sure it dries a little bit, you want to go in between two petals. So right now I'm applying it in between those first two petals, and I'm applying the fifth one now. And that's going to start layering it and giving it dimension, and it's going to start to become a flower from the outside in. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm doing it about a half an inch or so below the very first original petals, and that's going to give you a lot of movement. And you guys can see this flower just starts to create itself. So from there, now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to create that very last petal, and then we're going to do some more interesting stuff. So I'm switching to a smaller brush that's the exact same shape that I was using before, and we're going to create the top of the center bud of that rose. So with this brush, you're going to apply it right into that prisma again, and you're going to want to create a little bit of a small end shape again. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It is a lot easier than you would think, but it does take some practice because you only have one shot, one kill shot with that brush. So I'm just going to apply some more product, and I'm going to, right where that top ends, I'm going to U-shape it right up, and that's going to give you your center butt. Do you see how that kind of happens? It's a little bit of magic going on. And it really just creates that center focus line. And then we're going to, again, load the brush, flatten the brush again. We're going to apply it right next to that bud. You want to swish it. And you're going to want to end right at the tip of the brush. You want to end at the white tip to get that flick out. And that's going to give you the illusion of spiraling downward petals right in the center. I hope you see. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to speed up this process. You guys, you essentially just want to create a collection of them all over your body in an asymmetrical shape if you want to follow exactly how I did it. I'm going to speed this one up and the next one after just to kind of see so you guys can kind of get a quick vibe. Then I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did one more time. But um, you guys can see that I'm moving my brush lower down on that Prisma Ombre uh, face paint because to, to make these flowers a little bit darker as they go up. So you guys can see that this one now has the most black in it yet. And I did that instinctively because I wanted every flower to, although be very similar in shape, they did um, differ a little bit in tone. So you guys can get a little bit more movement going on there. And they're not perfectly identical. They have a little bit going differently going on for each one. I thought that would be a little bit more interesting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So then just showing off the three we've done, you can see how the top one has a little bit the most black in it. And you want to just kind of create, uh, keep creating that collection. Now we're going to go in with the red and the white one, which is super difficult. These prismas are definitely something you should pick up if you want to do roses. But you want to just split the brush in half. Like, And I do it the best I can like this. And it's uh, a little bit more difficult when you're using two face paint shades because um, they muddy together. And I tried all of my cream and liquid paints that I own, and none of them were pigmented enough or gave me... A, like a solid and almost like a perfected stroke with one brush swipe so um it's it's really uh it's really an easy technique but the products have to be right you know what i'm saying so now i'm going to slow it down and show you guys one more time so i'm loading the brush and i'm creating the very first petal again you want to load the brush after every single petal to prevent muddying and also to keep your uh, brush flat and square and then from there we're just going to create the first original four petals Really what you want to just focus on now is the outer perimeter of the flower itself because we're going to be building on everything on the inside. 
so again just another tip is to make sure that it dries you want to make sure that these four petals dry before you go in with the fifth petal to again prevent muddying we want this to look real gorge and then about a half an inch down from that perimeter line in our very first petals you want to start creating these inner petals I feel like I'm saying petals a lot I really hope this makes sense because it's super fun <laughs> So yeah, from there you want to create about uh, three or four more on that inner rim, and then we're going to go in with that center bud again. So with a small brush, I'm applying that center bud, just a little bit of an end shape, and then you want to loop around the, with the larger brush. So you guys can see I'm starting on the right side, I'm pressing, and then I'm just looping a little U shape, pulling it right back up to the end of the left side of the bud, and that gives you that centerpiece. And then from there, I'm pressing, I'm swishling it in, and then I'm flicking it around to make sure to end on the corner of the brush. Boom. Boom. And then do it one more time. Push it in, rolling it in, and then swishing it to the left and flicking the end. <laughs> do you guys see what I'm saying? And then you guys can do that a couple more times just to add a little bit more dimension. But that's how you guys can get a rose. And it's really easy. This The products are a little bit per, uh, specific. You really just need to get... Um, some uh, pretty specific paints. This works a lot really well with acrylic paints. If you guys have acrylic body paints, um, you guys can just, you know, create a little bit uh, on a palette and kind of just dip each side of the brush in. But if not, the Mehran Prismas are at the bomb.com. So I'm doing a similar thing with the with the uh, leaves now. I'm just pressing it and I'm just wiggling it over and then ending in a flick. And as you guys can see, I'm instinctively making these a lot lighter than the roses itself. I went to the very edge of that Prisma Ombre face paint palette and I'm only grabbing uh, mostly white with a teensy bit of gray and you guys can see that I accidentally left a little bit of gap in between the leaves so I'm just going back in one more time on that right side and bringing it in a little bit closer I'm just zigzagging it down and then ending in a flick and that'll give you a leaf leaves are the I'm least good at the leaves I've only this is my first time doing them I've only practiced a few times the roses but um so now I'm just going in the same thing I'm really sorry it's out of focus when my camera like automatically zooms in on my face and then since I film alone I can't have like I don't have a camera guy yet um, I haven't found my Stephen Perkins in life but uh, I'm just creating um, some more leaves you feel me so yeah, now I'm, you guys can see that I'm hugging it right across that rose. I wanted to get it close to the rose as possible and then flick them into a leaf. We're going to go back in with the Anastasia New Lip Palette. And we're going to highlight and shade with her, her new incredible lipsticks. But until then, you want to get it as close as possible and then we can start tweaking. You guys can see that I messed up here. All you guys have to do is take a makeup wipe and you guys can sharpen up any line, whether it be a rose or a leaf. Nothing's permanent. Don't you worry. Don't stress out. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to be creating even more leaves. You guys can see I'm just zigzagging and flicking. Boom. So some of these roses I do double-sided, and some of them I do a one-stroke technique. They're both different, and they both just, again, create leaves. But for one last time, I'll show you a leaf. I'm just going to hug it right by that rose. Get it real close. Ready? Okay. And then I'm zigzagging up and down, up and down, and then you want to end in a point. Whoop. Leaf. Ta-da. So this is a really fun technique. It takes a teensy bit of practice, but it's so rewarding to watch that blend happen in such quick motions. It's great. So from then, I wanted to create an uh, asymmetrical overall design. So you guys can see that I went really heavy on what you're seeing is my right shoulder. And then on my uh, what you're seeing is my left side. I'm cr creating most of that on the neck and then up the face. And I think uh, I, I would just, you know, for some reason really wanted to create a little bit of an asymmetrical with that pop of that one red rose. I thought it was super, super fun. But I'm just using the same thing. So all you really need to remember is you need a flat brush. You need to dip the brush after every petal. And make sure that each layer dries before you add more. You see what I'm saying? Perfect. And then I'm just creating more leaves also on the face and um, around the neck and stuff just to add some more dimension and then just carrying it over to what you're seeing is my left shoulder. I keep saying what you're seeing because it's actually my right side of my shoulder. It's that whole mirroring effect. I'm just like rambling now. This video is kind of long and... I'm just repeating the same thing over and over. But if you guys recreate this, definitely tag me on social media. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. I would love to see you guys do this because when I first learned this technique, I found it to be very rewarding and I thought it was so beautiful and it was also so simple and I, I don't know, I was really, really proud of the face paint techniques. So I really wanted to do that hard negative space. So what I'm going to do since I have hooded eyelids is I'm taking Max Black Track, which is a gel liner, and I'm applying that to my eyelid, and then I'm going to set that with a black eyeshadow. Because if I use any water-activated paints, if you guys have hooded lids or oily eyelids, that will break up immediately. So for longevity, if you guys are looking to wear this in the real world and want it to hold up for as long as possible, use a black gel liner on movable areas like your eyes and your mouth. So from there, again, I'm just setting that with black eyeshadow so it doesn't move. And then we're just going to cover all of 
the rest of our body in a negative uh a true black like super 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 black i'm using may ryan's uh, paradise paint in black make sure to show your friend on facetime your high fashion smoky eye gorgeous <laughs> So the only tip really here is to take a little bit of a smaller brush initially and to really hug that rose with a small brush. That way you can reshape anything that you want and you guys can get a really nice clean line. And then from there you guys can switch to a larger brush. So I'm just doing that first and then I'm just, you know, kind of creating that sharp line. And I completely omitted me covering my body in that black face paint because it's super simple. Just cover your whole body. <laughs> So now I'm taking the Anastasia Lip Palette, which is brand new. It's super pigmented and it blends out like a dream, so I knew I had to use it. And I'm using that to shade where the roses meet the leaf. You want the rose to be higher, so you want to add shadow on that leaf to, to really imply that uh, that difference in distance. And I'm just doing that to all of the leaves, but I'm also doing it in between some of the roses because I did paint some of them on top of each other. So you want to solidify that with shadow and then also adding it to the center of the rose. Now I'm taking the white, which is super pigmented. I was very surprised and pleasantly surprised, of course. And I'm using that to highlight the edge of every single rose, which is uh, I omitted because, you know, it's just a little teens teens. And I'm taking a little bit of a dark pink shadow to shade the reddish pink rose in the center. And then again, I'm taking that white cream paint and I'm highlighting. So essentially you want to highlight where the highlights already are. You just want to strengthen them. Do you see what I'm saying? And then that's the finished tutorial, my friends. I, I hope you guys liked it. It's shockingly simple. It's really beautiful. I think the high contrast really just makes the eye focus on the rose detail. And I think it's just such a stunning technique. And if you guys do try one stroke, please tag me on social media. I would love to see. It makes me so happy. It's one of my favorite techniques in the world. And I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys like this video and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, friends.